Here's a helpful tip when you need to multiply a trinomial by another trinomial. Now, in this case, I have a trinomial squared, but again, remember that all that means is we're gonna multiply the 2x squared plus 3x plus one times the 2x squared plus 3x plus one. Do not distribute the power across addition and subtraction. Okay, now, a lot of times when students are looking at a problem like this, they immediately want to go to, well, I guess I can just do distributive property, 2x you know, times everything, 3x times everything, one times everything. And yes, you can. And you know what? I don't have a problem with it. Here's what I have a problem though with that method is it's very, very easy to make mistakes. Any time that I am applying distributive property for more than two terms, I somehow make a mistake. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just me. Maybe you guys are immune to making mistakes. I either write it just incorrectly. I forget to raise an X to a certain power. I forget which ones I multiply by. I just constantly make mistakes using that method. So one thing that I always like to do is apply the box method. And the box method basically is saying, when you have a product of two terms, you know that that is going to create a area of a rectangle. So use a box to go ahead and organize that. Now, sometimes when I'm first teaching this, students get a little confused and I say, well, what do you mean? If I said two times three, wouldn't you agree that you could represent that as a two, three, where two could be the height and three could be the width? And you say the area is going to be six. And they're like, yeah. And then I said, well, and if I had did a two X over a three X, Right? We would still represent that even though we don't know the value of x, we could say that's going to be a 6x squared. If I had an x plus 2 times a x plus 3, we could still do that. But now what we're going to do is we're going to create this box like this and we have an x plus 2 and an x plus 3. And now all we simply do is we find the area of each of these boxes, which is a x squared plus 3x, 2x and plus 6. And if you were to multiply that out, hopefully you would agree with me that applying FOIL or distributive property, you're going to get an x squared plus 5x plus 6. But what's the nice thing about the box method? It just keeps things organized. So if I have a trinomial times a trinomial, I'm just going to go straight to the box method. The box method is really simple. For how many terms you have, that is how many rows you're going to create on your height. So here I have three terms, so I'm going to create three rows. For how many terms of your next, next term, you're gonna create the number of columns. Here I have three terms, so I'm going to create three columns. And then you simply just write each term in front. So I have a two X squared, a three X, as well as a one. Now, obviously if they're negative, make sure you put a negative in there as well. So in this case, I have a two X squared, three X, and a positive one. Now, just like we did over here, you're just gonna multiply height times base or length times width or whatever you need to think about. You just wanna find the area of each box because then you know, all the area of all the boxes make up the whole area of your rectangle. So I always just like this. I just make less mistakes multiplying it this way than drawing lines as far as FOIL goes. So hopefully if you don't use the box method, this can be a helpful tip for you. So 2x squared times 2x squared is a 4x to the fourth. 2x squared times 3x is going to be a 6x cubed. 2x squared times 1 is going to be a 2x squared. 2x squared times 3x is going to be a 6x cubed. 3x times 3x is going to be a 9x squared. 3x times 1 is going to be a 3x. 2x times 1 is going to be a 2x squared. 1 times 3 is a 3x. 1 times 1 is a 1. Now, actually, the really reason why this becomes a powerful method is because when you have binomials that are both in standard form, what you're going to do is you're always going to get like terms, ladies and gentlemen, on the diagonal. I cannot tell you how many times I've caught a mistake where I had like an x here or, you know, an x cubed over here. Everything on the diagonal, as long as your two terms binomials that you're multiplying are in standard form, they're always gonna be like terms. So then you simply just combine your like terms on the diagonal. So my final answer here is a four x to the fourth, a positive 12 x cubed, a 13 x squared, a six x and plus one.